Welcome to Guac Gaming. Guacking here with a video on Red Dead Online's fifth frontier pursuit, The Naturalist. I'm also going to go over some tips and tricks I learned along the way, so stay tuned for that. The Naturalist brought to the game two contacts, Harriet and Gus. In this video, I'm going to focus primarily on Harriet, and I'll have another video focusing more on Gus's role with The Naturalist. Now, Harriet can be found any time of the day in three different locations. One in Big Valley, north of Little Creek. Another one in Lemoyne, north of Legras. And the last location is in New Austin, north of McFarland's Ranch. So opposite of Gus, Harriet wants to learn all she can about animals without hurting them. So if you've been grinding trader, or bring perfect carcasses and pelts to Gus. When you show up to talk to Harriet, she may spray you, but don't worry, she'll eventually forgive you and you'll be able to continue working with her later on. All right, first things first, how do you level up and make money? Now, the first thing you gotta do is get to level five because you unlock a lot more missions and legendary animals. To get there, you can either go to missions with Harriet and then do poached animals down here in the bottom right. The poached animal missions don't exactly break the mold on online gameplay. Basically, Harriet sends you to go kill a bunch of people she calls poachers. The only difference is you gotta unlock some animals out of cages and let them free. I usually try to get a sample off them as they come out though. But that's a good way to grind some XP. And there's also selling samples. Now to get samples, you have to use the varmint rifle with sedative rounds that can be purchased from Harriet. And once you've sedated an animal, you can go and take a sample off of it. Once you get those samples, you can then sell them to Harriet. Each sample is worth a certain amount of money depending on how vicious the animal is and how rare the animal is. And of course, the legendary animals are worth the most amount of money. Now, the real key to selling samples is to finish out categories in your animal field guide. The animal field guide is essentially what the compendium was in single player and you can access it in your items right here now once you pull out the animal field guide you've got a number of different categories you can choose from when you click on each category or set you'll see that to get 100 percent completion on most animals you have to track kill skin study sedate sample and photograph Studied just happens once you track an animal, so you don't really need to worry about that one. And I've got a trick with photographing the animals later. But to make money with a roll, you only need to sedate and sample an animal. So it's kind of like Madame Nazar, except for you could go ahead and sell the things to Harriet rather than having to collect them all in one go. So each animal that I've given to Harriet has the stamp in the bottom right hand corner. And once you've given Harriet a sample from each of these categories, you could then sell the whole category. And you do that in the main menu here. So you see that the stamp for these two are right there in the picture where wetland habitat doesn't have it. That means I've gotten all the samples here. And on the bottom right, you can hit square to trade it in. And the amount of money you make from trading it in is on the bottom of the screen right there where it says $60 for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade it in. And now the stamp disappears and the stamps for all of the animals in the category have disappeared as well. So different categories you can see are worth more than others as you move to the right. And the category I think is the best category to pursue is the mountain and grasslands habitat. That's because these animals that are in this category are not that hard to come by and a lot of them travel in packs so you could get more than one of them in one go but these animals are pretty easy to find and each time you finish this category it's going to net you 140 dollars now forest and river habitats will get you more money but if you take a look at these you can see that some of these are pretty hard to come by the bull moose and the female moose are not easy to find now another really easy one to get are the desert habitats. That being said, these are only easy if you spend time out in New Austin. If you spend any amount of time out there, you can find pretty much all of these animals pretty easily, with the exception of the Sierra Nevada bighorn ram and the Sierra Nevada bighorn sheep. These are in the desert habitats, but you will find these all throughout tall trees and big valley. And it doesn't matter if you find them out there, as well as the cougar. If you find the cougar in Big Valley, it doesn't matter. It'll all count for the desert habitats. 
Wetland habitats is pretty much a no-go. While it's easy to find some of these, the panther and the Florida panther usually find you first, and plugging each of them with six rounds with a varmint rifle is not an easy task. And some of the water snakes are pretty difficult to get because they hang out in the water. And you can sedate them, but you can't lasso them, so you're swimming in the water trying to push them over to the edge, and it's just not an ideal situation. So this set is really a no-go. Even though I typically hang out in Lemoyne, this really isn't the easiest way to make money or to level up with this role. And every time you complete a category, not only do you get the money for completing that category, but you also get 1,250 XP in the roll, which is more than half your way through a whole level. So this to me is really the fastest way to level up. Stick with the mountain and grasslands habitats and you're gonna level up pretty fast. Now, once you get past level five, you unlock three new free roam events as well as legendary animals. So the three new free roam events are protect legendary animals, wildlife photographer, and wild animal tagging. With protect legendary animals, you basically spawn in with a random legendary animal and you have to protect it from poachers. And it's a good opportunity to get a photo and track the animal so that if you find it later on in free roam, you won't have to worry about doing those two things because you only have to do them once. But if you don't care about that, it also gets you a sample, but you typically end up with the same ones over and over again. So it's kind of a useful free roam event when you're early on in the naturalist, but I pretty much don't do them anymore. Wild animal tagging is basically you're running around in a specific area, tagging as many animals as you can get while other people are doing the same thing and you're just competing against each other to see who could get the most tag. There's also a legendary animal that will spawn in this as well. And if you're the one who finds it and you can sedate it and sample it, that's actually pretty solid. But there's so many people running around, it may not be you that finds it and you might end up with a sample but no sedate. I pretty much don't do these anymore either. And then the last free roam event is wildlife photographer. The wildlife photographer is cool if you want to photograph all the animals. The animal field guide for me is a challenge. So I've been trying to photograph all of the animals that I can, but unless you're into photography, I wouldn't bother with that mission. Now, the most important reason why you wanna get past level five is for the legendary animals. So let's get into that. Now, legendary animals are the most interesting thing that came along with the naturalist update. The easier legendary animals to get are through the missions tab with Harriet. Instead of going to poached animals like before, once you're level five, you'll have access to the left side of the screen here, which show you the legendary animals that are available at the moment. And down at the bottom, you'll see a timer. When this timer runs out, the legendary animals that are available for these missions will change, and then you'll have a new selection to choose from. When you select one of these animals, it starts a mission. Kind of like when you went after legendary bounties from before, except this time you're trying to find a legendary animal and either sedate it or kill it and skin it. But we'll get more into killing and skinning when we talk about Gus in the next video. So as far as Harriet's concerned, she just wants you to go find this animal, save it from poachers or find it in the wild, sedate it and sample it and bring the sample back to her. Now the legendary animals work just like the other animals in that they are placed into different sets. Legendary animals dark worth $680. Legendary animals light worth $500. Legendary animals red and blonde worth $700 and legendary animals patterned worth $480. Now the tricky part about the legendary animals at this time is that there are missing links in every set. So not all of the legendary animals have been drip fed into the game just yet. Every set is missing something. But they do work just like any other animal in that you have to track them, kill them, skin them, study them, sedate them, sample them, and photograph them to get them 100% complete. But again, you don't need 100% completion to make money off them. You can still sell the samples as soon as you get them to Harriet, and the legendary animal samples are typically worth a lot more. Now, while you can get a lot of legendary animals through Harriet's missions, most of the legendary animals have to be found in free roam, which can be a lot easier said than done. So find the map in your satchel and pull it up and you'll see a map that's not unlike the legendary animal map in single player. Now, all the legendary animals that are available in free roam are located on this map, and they all like certain weather and certain times of day, but really all of them can be found at any point. 
you just have a higher likeliness of finding them if you look for the animal in the right time of day. Now, as promised, I wanna go over some tips and tricks. The first tip I have is work in a team. If your goal is to sedate animals, you can actually work with another person hunting down these legendary animals. I've hunted down quite a few legendary animals with a partner. And what I found is, if the first person begins sedating the animal with three to four rounds, and the second person finishes sedating the animal three to four rounds, both players will actually get credit for sedating the animal. And of course, once the legendary animal's on the ground, both players can take a sample. But the way I've been able to see it, two heads are better than one. Another tip is use the legendary animal pheromones. Now with the legendary animal pheromones, you could buy the pamphlet or just buy them from Harriet. I've got a video I'll link in the description below going over whether the pamphlets in this update are worth buying or not. So if you want that breakdown, you could take a look at it. But however you acquire your legendary animal pheromones, they're very useful when hunting legendary animals. If you see the question mark indicating that a legendary animal has popped up on free roam, you drop the legendary animal pheromones at that point and it's not a bait, it's not gonna attract the legendary animal, but it'll reveal its location to you a lot more clearly than you just sort of poking around and hoping to find it. Another tip I have is in keeping track of your sets, when you access all your samples from Harriet, they're not organized at all, but if you go to your satchel and go to valuables, you'll see your sets exist right here. So if you're not sure where you're at with a particular set, you can click on your set here and see which ones you have and how many of them you have. So I have four Devonox, but only one sheep. So if I go get three more sheep and three more cows and so on and so forth, I'll know how many sets I can sell with just one visit to Harriet. Another trick I learned along the way is with taking photos. Now, if you start taking photos of all the animals, you're gonna find that Rockstar is saving all of the photos onto their social club. And when you run out of space, it's gonna start kicking you an error message saying you need to delete photos. And it's a painfully long process to delete photos. What I found is this, if you're like me and you don't really care about the photos, then just stop deleting photos. Because as far as the animal field guide is concerned, as soon as you snap a picture of an animal, it'll check the box. The game doesn't actually care whether the photo was saved to Rockstar Social Club or not. So you can save yourself a lot of time if you just stop deleting photos and then back out of the error message whenever it pops up. So all in all, I think the naturalist is a pretty cool role. I like the animal field guide. I like the wilderness camp and a lot of the clothes that came with it. So I was pretty happy with it. Let me know in the comments below if you liked this update and why. But that's all I've got for you today. So if you thought this video was helpful, drop me a like and subscribe for more Red Dead Online content. Next time you bring the chips, cause I got the guac.